For one, am grateful, Mrs. Bush, that they are finally bringing civilization to this savage land. I could not agree with you more, my dear. My daddy settled this land, and I know he'll be looking down on us, pleased at how we help the natives. Yes, they've lost their land, but they've gained access to heaven. But Father, do you mean unless an innocent receives communion, they're destined to go to hell? Uh, it hardly seems fair. Uh, what I mean to say, Jenny, is that there is a great deal of difference between an innocent and a savage. I never thought of it that way. Yes, they lived like animals, but they're happier now. Uh -huh. Not only do people now have motor cars, Father, but I heard that pretty soon, we will be able to fly. No, only angels can fly, Jenny. No, no, apparently people can fly. Didn't you hear? Out in Kansas, a man even got a car to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly think so, Jenny. Apparently, Mr. Johns wants to run for governor which is why he's so concerned with cleaning up the state. Nate Johns. Yes. His family is nothing but hillbilly trash that came here after the war. I don't want to be judgmental, but this state should not be ruled by such a disgusting family. A family without class. Apparently. The Johns family have made a lot of money, and he has a lot of friends in politics. Mrs. Bush, money isn't everything. There are many things that money cannot buy. It seems that money can buy voters, though. What you must remember, my dear, is that we have been brought here to spread the word. And the word and civilization, they are the same thing. They are the gifts 
It is the opportunity we have, the chance to live among people who are decent and who do not kill each other, and who let you worship in peace. Uh, it, it's so confusing, Father. Sometimes I find it impossible to make the distinction between a loving act and a hateful one. I mean, they often seem to be the same thing. Yes, Jenny, it, it is confusing. But you only have to ask me if you need help. Indeed. Well, here we are, Mrs. Bush. <gasps> Armadillo. John Marston. Sometimes. I'm Jake. Your friends from Blackwater hired me to guide you. They ain't my friends, but pleased to meet you, Jake. I got the horses saddled up and ready out front. Mr. Marson, let's get Chris. I wish I was dead. I ain't so sure about that. Take it easy until we're out of town. Ain't no point in causing a rook. You got a problem with that battle, Mr. Marson? Let's go. I doubt it. I ain't planning on staying very long. Well, if you're fixing for some female company, you can do a lot worse than armadillo. Fine as cream gravy they are. Not like Steve Grander. Dang, those girls ain't even fit for a drinking man to hold up with. I'm a married man, I'm afraid. Ain't we all? <laughs> yeah, so it was the marshal who hired me. Lee Johnson, do you know him? I think I heard his name. Says he got a telegram from some Blackwater fig bugs asking for a guy. I guess it's none of my business. That's right. You ain't very talkative, are you? Nope. I'm just chewing the dog, mister. That's how I am. I don't mean nothing by it. Trust me. There's things you better off not knowing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't look much like no blackboarder, fella. That's because I ain't. If I'm being honest, I don't care much for those high and big city types. Not much at all. Blackwater ain't much of a city. More of a town with delusions, but no, me neither. A fella told me he was out in Blackwater a few months back and saw one of them newfangled carriages without horses. Is that so? Hey, you wind him up like a clock. Damnedest thing ye ever saw without the aid of liquor, he told me. Times are changing fast, that's for sure. you're looking for? Nobody you need to concern yourself with. Never you mind all my questions, Mr. Marston. I just reckon you might be barking out a knot heading for the fort. We'll see when we get there. 
Well, I sure as hell ain't sticking around. Fort Mercer ain't no place for an old man like me to be a dawdling around. Far now, Mr. Marston. The fort's just over this hill. Give me up. Listen, mister. This here is what's left of Fort Mercer. Some gang rode in and took the place over. So I understand. This is where we part ways, friend. You have yourself a good time. <laughs> Come. for you Bill Williamson come out here right now go away now John don't make me kill you nobody needs to kill anyone Bill you must think I was born yesterday you always did think I was an idiot that ain't fair Bill you were as my brother. I've come to try to save you. <laughs> oh. Do I look like I need saving? Bill, please. They want to kill us all. I can help you. Well, you never tried to save me before. You only seemed to save yourself. Bill. I implore you, think about this. <laughs> you implore me? <laughs> you implore me? You always were one for fancy words. <laughs> oh. Well, things are different now, John. Now I'm in charge! No more Dutch! And no more you. <laughs> implores. I I implores you to go back and tell them to send someone just a little bit more impressive next time. Well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor John. Well, you're alive. So it would seem. So, how do you feel? I don't know the polite word for it. I do. Stupid is the word we use around here. What were you doing? I was 
Oh, I was doing something stupid. Well, you'll be okay. Once you didn't die, the doctor said you'd be fine. He got the bullets out a couple days ago. Good. It cost us $15. I'm sorry, madam. You should have left me there to die. Did you want to die? I mean, was that it? Was that why you went straight out to Fort Mercer and picked a fight with the worst bandit in the county? To die, Mr. Er, Mr. Uh, Marston. John Marston. Bonnie McFarlane. Miss Bonnie McFarlane. Well, you may be right, Miss McFarlane. I don't know. Huh. So what were you doing? I was trying to give Mr. Williamson a chance. For old time's sake. You know Bill Williamson? Knew him. Long time ago. Well, what was he like? Dumb. Just like you. Thank you, miss. <laughs> See my hat? I have. And, uh, what will you do now? Now I'm gonna take my time and go after him the less kind way. Well, that sounds very fun, Mr. Marston. Quite heroic, just like in those penny dreadfuls my brother used to read. Meanwhile, if you'll excuse me, I've got a ranch to run. Of course, if you're feeling better, why not take a ride with me later and help me patrol the perimeter? You can earn back some of that money we wasted on doctor's bills. Of course. And thank you. For saving my life, I mean. Next time, Mr. Marston, I strongly recommend you don't try to lose it quite so earnestly. I'll bear that in mind. Figured it's about time I started paying back that $15. Well, no time to waste. The horses are saddled up over here. <sighs> There's the foreman's office. It's also where we lock up good-for-nothing outlaws, such as yourself. I'm happy enough with my current quarters right now, Miss McFarland. Hop on up. He won't bite. Come on, boy. Come on. Time for you to see what a real ranch looks like. is the general store. You won't find Parisian high fashion, but it's good for the essentials. Very convenient. I don't think I've ever seen a ranch with its own store before. And here's the corral. This one's for the horses. What do you think? I'm no expert, but it certainly looks like a fine corral. I suspect you've stolen more horses than you've broken. Now where'd you get such an idea? First impressions are hard to erase. That's the train station. Things sure have changed since the line finally got finished. Bringing in all sorts of new folk like yourself. Is that such a bad thing? Change is only good when it makes things better. over there. Paul built it himself when I was just a little girl. And here we are, back at the house. Let's stop for a while before we head out on patrol. You'll get no complaints from me, Miss McFarland. What are you waiting for? Come on, I don't fight. Oh. 
<sighs> How about a cold drink, Mr. Marston? Thank you, ma'am. Getting shot, then riding a horse seems to take it out of you. <laughs> I could use a rest. Sure. Come on in. I'll show you the house, and then you can sit for a while. Thank you. Mr. Marston. Miss McFarland. Remember me telling you about the trouble we've been having with rustlers and other undesirables? I do. Will you help me keep watch on the property line this evening? Sure. I want to see just who is trespassing on our land. This is a fine weapon. Come, let's head out. The country is really beautiful at around this time. We'd best get moving. This is a dangerous time of night for us. Right, follow me. Keep your eyes peeled for anything suspicious. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I feel a lot happier someone's along with me. I feel a lot happier now I got a rifle. Well, with your trigger itch and my feminine intuition, we should make quite a team. God damn it, these rabbits are at it again. Come on, let's get rid of them once and for all. Let's go. Let's see that rifle. I want a couple of these for the pot. It ain't never easy living off the land like this. Maybe you should move to a big city, become a lady of leisure. Look out! Coyote! Shoot them before they get to the animals! Go!
here we are. Thank you for your help, Mr. Marston. Makes me kind of happy I saved your life. Get some sleep and I will see you in the morning. Good night, Miss McFarlane. Follow Charlie. He's a good one to sniff out trouble. Stay close to Charlie. Nice to see you. Say what you like about Drew McFarlane, but he raised a proper lady. I hear tell.
Okay. 